You say clear on a staircase shape is one box, two boxes, three boxes, four boxes, five boxes, six boxes. Right? Now what we are going to do is we are going to take a maximal chain. Remember, these numbers are just the flips that you make from the identity. Flip for five, flip for six, blah, 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 right? And we are going to assign to each of these numbers the step at which that flip happens. Very simple. So this is step number one. This is step number two. This is step number three, etc. Is this clear? And what we are going to do is we are going to encode this mapping in this tableau. How? This is, we are going to call this column column one. We are going to call this column column two. This one column three, column four, column five, etc. Is that clear? And we are going to insert this information here. How? In entry four, five, put the number one. In entry four, five, put the number one. One, because that's the mapping. In entry four six, put the number two. In entry four six, put the number two. In entry two five, put the number four. Is that clear? So this is no different object than this. It's exactly the same object, just packed nicely. Well, beautiful things happen right now. All these numbers are different for starters, right? They have to go from 1 to inches 2. So these are boxes with numbers from 1 to inches 2. But it happens to be that these numbers satisfy a balance property. And that balance property happens on what are called hooks of this object. All I have done here, I have put some colors for you. But the numbers are the same as before. What is a hook? Pick an entry. Look at the column above and look at the row to the right. So the hook for this entry is that L. So you are, you are French, I guess. There's a French convention. That may be insulting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just got used to it because we have a lot of French visitors. <laughs> okay. So is it clear what the, what the hook is? And now I painted those. Now we are going to consider the hook for this entry, that L. And I have painted this entry and that one, the first entry there and this first entry here, of the same color. So the name of the game is that entry has a partner, which is this entry. This entry has a partner, which is this entry. This entry has a partner, which is this entry. And this entry has a partner, which is this entry. Is that clear? For every L, you can do this partner thing because this has the same length as this by definition of the object. And now you look at the values now. And you are going to compare those values with respect to the most important box in that hook, which is this. This is the important box is this. Look at what happened. That number is 11 and this is 5. What happened with 9? It's in between 11 and 5. How about the other two partners? 7 and 13. What happens with 9? It's in between. The other two partners, 10 and 2. What happens with 9? It's in between. Maybe in reverse order, but it's in between. The other two partners, 8 and 15. It's 9. It's in between. So, what is the property? The corner of every L satisfies that the value of the corner is in between the partners. This is called the balance property of the ends, or the balance property, or the hooks, if you want. Is that clear? This is true for every L you look at in this. Every L you look at the same thing is true. Oh, really? Yeah. For example, this L. You can check the same thing, and this guy, look at the partners, and it will be in between those two, in between those two for every single L, the value of the corner is in between the partners of its hook. Is this correct here? So in other way of saying, the, the ranking of it is the size, the, the depth, right? The ranking of this guy. The ranking of the, in the hook, in the corner, at the, 
It's in between. Yeah, it's in, in between the rankings of those partners, yes. That's another way to say. But that does not deserve another. No, no, it's for, it's for that I cannot give you it one. Nice, it's nice column. Huh? The, the rank, if you look at any individual book, the ranking of the one in the middle, yeah. the smaller one, is in between. Is, is according to its, uh, according to its uh, size, uh, number. Then I don't remember the definition of balance block, but it's probably equivalent. Maybe. Yeah. But this is the one that I have found yeah. the easiest. So, yeah. so is it clear what balance is? Okay, so we have started with the maximal chain. We did this coding, and this has this very beautiful property. Oh, what about the other way around? What happened if you give me one of these things? Can you come back and give me the maximal chain? Yes, so this is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So this object is no different to maximal chains in the we blue house. Okay? But you are waiting for graphs, right? Okay, so I took the same numbers as before. And now I'm going to play a Bellows game. A Bellows game is now you look at any box, and you're going to look at if that box is bigger than everything above. If it's bigger, you paint it blue. Or excuse me, red. If it's not, you paint it blue. Let's look at why, why that guy has blue. Why? Is it bigger than everything above? No. You are a blue guy. What about this guy? Is he bigger than everything above? Yes, two is bigger than one. So that's right. right. Is it clear? Well, well, zeros and ones is the same thing as the colors, right? But well, that's a graph. Zeros and ones, anything like this is a graph. That's a graph. And there is a duality here. It is you can say, okay, I'm going to look at any entry and look at to the right. If it's a minimum of everything to the right, then you put the one or zero. Happens to be that these two things are dual to each other. So I call this the local max statistics of a tableau. They they balance tableau, they point. Am I bigger than everything above? Yes, I get a one. No, I get a zero. That's the graph. Is it clear what the graphs are? Okay, so the question is, what the heck are these graphs? Are they perfect? Are there any class of graph that you can think of? We have checked different directions. Different people have checked different things. They appear to be really a new class of graphs. New ones. So that's the adjacent matrix of the graph? So you get a zero one? Yeah. yeah. Now, a couple of the things that you should look at, look at this, this second diagonal. One well, of them have to be ones because there's nothing above. So this graph is Hamiltonian to start with, right? Well, so. Do you have loops? How do you get the complete graph? Don't, don't look at this because now this is, this is more complicated than this. This is just look at the completely ordered set. One, no, two, three. Now, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 9. Now, what happens if you, you apply the Abelos game to this? What do you get? Well, this guy is bigger than the guy. I want to get one. What about this guy? Bigger than that? So what do you get? All ones, right? So complete graphs are definitely here. That's very simple, right? Local max mean of balanced tableaus produce between course and new class of graphs. What are the properties of these graphs? I don't know if I should bother you with this. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. This is one of those objects. It looks very complicated, but it's extremely simple actually. This is ones and zeros. And all I would like to, to focus your attention is give me an interval of zeros. Anywhere here. For example, this is an example. One, one, and this is an interval of zeros. Maximum interval of zeros. Right? Now consider the rectangle above that interval of zeros. All of them have to be zeros. It's very simple. One, one, zero, zero, extended. This entry here, 
That entry, nothing else. One one rectangle, that entry must be a one. So you can do this also horizontally, an interval of zeros vertical, one, one, zero, and you extend it until the diagonal, and that entry has to be one. So there is a duality here, but just that property, nothing else. This interval extension property, that's why I call this that persistent. If you give me any such adjacency matrix, and you look at any interval of zeros, and you say, oh, 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 good, 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 ah, what? These stars are implied by this condition. One, here. One, one, zero, extending. Oh, it's hit here. One, anyone, uh, then that is structure of this graph. Any graph obtained in this fashion from a balanced tableau uh, by the local mass or local mean satisfies this problem. But there is also something more interesting about that. Is that in any such graph, there is always, you can find at least one entry. There is a one that can be flipped to a zero without violating the property. This takes some time to prove. In any such animal, you will always be able to find a one that you can change to a zero, and the property that I described to you is not violated. So this are, I call this reversible matrix. And you can you can do other studies of this, but let me show you what I call prime persistent graphs. Very simple. Take a complete graph here. This is all one, so this is a complete graph. A complete graph here. These are all ones, and now. From this line, from this line, you can look at that rectangle here, draw a path, a monotone path in any way you want, fill these guys with ones, fill those guys with zeros. Those graphs are persistent graphs. What that means? What that means is that these graphs have corresponding maximum change in the wind. These are, these are very special type of graphs. What's important about this graph? Why do I call this graph prime? Because any persistent graph can be decomposed as a sum of these graphs. For example, that graph there, that is one of those special graphs. That one is another one of those special graphs. Prime, that's another one of those special graphs. That's another one. And when you put the whole thing together, you get the whole graph. So any such graph can be decomposed as a sum of numbers. This is very complicated. This is this is combinatoric, zeros and ones, patterns. But give me something that is a neat graph theoretical description of these graphs. And these are the properties. Hamiltonian, these guys have to be Hamiltonian. Let me give you the other properties. The other property is what we call inversion completeness. It's just something like this. At any time that you have two cores with certain order of the vertices, the order is important. I will break it here, let's say. Any time that you have two cores that interlace like that, Two edges that interface like that, that implies that this also has to be an ancient graph. So you have an ordering of the vertices. Any time that you find that there are two edges in that order that interface like that, then that edge has to be also a graph. That's property one. That's called, we call that inversion completeness for lack of a better name. And there is the other property which is called order cordiality. In particular, there are no crossing things automatically. Is there a what? It, 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 if that is to happen? Yeah. Then, then it's a non-crossing non thing that number. The, 
So, if, if you don't have these crosses, yeah. if there are no such crosses, yeah. the graph is, is a path yeah. plus a special vertex joined to all of them. So it's a special. Yeah. So the condition says if they cross, then you have to put out. If they don't, then you, you don't do anything. So if they don't, they don't. The other condition is order cordiality. I want to mention that this is not cordiality. Cordiality, I guess you guys have heard that every cycle of length greater than three has a co, right? That's cordiality. You have a cycle of the you have to have a co. This is not this property. Similar, but it's not. Order here plays a major role. Everything graph that is cordial is order cordial, and not the other way around. Order cordiality just means that because we are dealing with Hamiltonian graphs, right? So if it happens to be that you have a cycle that jumps like that in the order, and now you have a back edge, then you have to have a code. So any graph that is Hamiltonian and that satisfies the inversion completeness property and that is order cordial is a persistent. So, graph theoretically, that's it. That's what it is. Is this clear? So is it easier to check than the definition? The what? Is it easier to check? Yeah. 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 Provided you give me the order. Okay, the question then, are there persistent graphs that do not come from maximal change in the Wigner Hour? Are there, are there persistent graphs that you can get that uh, are not covered by the local max game, by taking this local max statistics? Are there any? I mean, what do you think is the answer? Yes or no? No. Huh? No. Why do you guess that? <laughs> It'd be nice. I'm guessing yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, many people guess like you guys. But it was very hard to prove. It took about 20 years. <laughs> so the answer is there are no graphs outside this class. It's a nice, it's a nice statement, though. You're an optimist. <laughs> yeah. So. But it's a hard. It's hard to prove. It's hard to prove. Let's put it this way. It's low to prove. I, I don't know if hard is the right one. And the key to proving this is by using these reverse equations. So, uh, Doron has his own favorite persistent graph. And what do I need to provide to him? I need to tell him, oh, by the way, this is the maximal chain. And that maximal chain, you play the game as you graph. Well, there's an algorithm that does that. And the algorithm does this persistent, excuse me, this reversible entries changes in a very <laughs> algebraic way. So, so here is the algorithm, and we just go through it. How many minutes I have? Uh, minus one. Minus one. Oh, OK. So there's an algorithm that, given any persistent graph, gives you a maximum chain. That's it. Here is the algorithm in working. Uh -huh. That's the proof. The geometry of persistent graphs. I will. Will you allow me 30 seconds? Because it's so interesting, yes. Huh? Yeah, because it's so interesting. I didn't look at the time. So sure. But is it okay? Yeah. For sure. It makes an exception. That's how, how, many, how many seconds? 30 seconds. 10? 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, but do not start counting yet. Yeah. Okay, 30 seconds. Happens to be that if you take a point on the y-axis and a point on the x-axis and you draw a polygonal path decreasing, joining those two points, and now you take the origin, then you have what is called a polygon. This is a very special polygon. This is called a staircase polygon. Because you, right? Now there is a special class of graphs called visibility graphs, and now you pick two points, 
But you say, do this guy see this guy? What in the line segment between them is contained in the tip, right? Visibility graphs of aesthetic exponents. That is the class of graphs that we are talking about. And they can be recognized in polynomial time. The same class of graphs that I described to you, graphs theoretically, or by using this construction, or balanced and non local maxes, is the same class as visibility graphs of aesthetic exponents. Thank you very much for a great talk. <laughs> it's great to answer questions in private.